to a new session in Hort Americas TV. My name is Carla Garcia, Hort Americas Technical Service. So today we will forget about food and learn a little bit about ornamentals. This session will be focused on lighting, how artificial lighting is using ornamentals and which benefits can we get uh, from the application of these technologies. So first, let's speak about the market in ornamentals. Even though ornamentals are only used for decoration and landscaping, uh, there is a very good market in here. Uh, here I can show you some data from the most recent, recent uh, summary about floriculture in the US made by the USDA. So in here you can see the wholesale value of cells in different categories like garden plants, potted plants, uh, flowering plants. Um, so uh, these quantities are million dollars. So definitely with the correct preparation and a strategy, uh, we can find a market in ornamentals. Another important information about ornamentals is where are they produced? So as you can see in this table, uh, most of the production of ornamentals is made inside of a greenhouse. We still have uh, production in open field, but uh, the area of, pro of production is getting uh, reduced, reduced every year. So uh, mainly the production of ornamentals is done in greenhouses. So why is this happening? Well, ornamentals include plants that are very sensitive to different parameters uh, that can be easily controlled inside of a greenhouse. A clear example is light. A lot of, orna of ornamentals doesn't do well under direct sunlight and uh, greenhouse technologies offers a lot of options to control light and not only light intensity, but also for a period, which is very important in ornamentals. But what is photoperiod? So uh, photoperiod is the measure of day length, hours of light before night. So photoperiod is pretty important for many crops and ornamentals because of flowering. So let's explain how plants show a response to photoperiod. Uh, we can group plants based on the response to photoperiod in uh, three categories the short day plants, long day plants, and day neutral. So uh, short day plants are plants that uh, uh, the flowering is triggered by short days. Usually these in treatments uh, happen from eight to 12 hours of light. And then this include very important plant in, uh, in ornamentals such as chrysanthemums. On the other hand, uh, we have uh, long day plants um, where flowering is triggered by long day conditions. So usually in treatments, you can get this from 16 to 18 hours of light. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the cultivar. So um, when we have a response uh, to for a period for a short day plant or a long day plant, um, this response can be either an obligate response or a facultative response. So an obligate response is uh, a response where we need to have uh, the conditions, for example, a short day condition or a long day conditions to have flowering. So the plant will not flower if, if for example, for example, I have a short day plant. This plant will only flower under short day conditions. So that means obligate response. Then we have the facultative response. So the facultative response um, is, it can also be a short day or long day response, but uh, these plants will flower in short days or long day conditions. But the thing is that we can accelerate flowering in either short days or long days, depending on the response of the plant. So for example, um, a facultative long day plant will be a plant that can flower in short and long days, but will flower earlier during long days. Um, then we have the day neutral, which is very simple because it's a kind of plant that doesn't have any response to for a period. It will flower in long days and short days. 
Here we can easily understand a short day response and a long day response. And I want to, sh to show you how artificial lighting is important uh, in a triggering um, even, uh, for example, uh, flower formation or avoid uh, the flower formation. So let's focus on short day plants. So uh, short day plants are plants that only flower on their short days. So in here we have um, a space that is yellow, that means light, um, gray is space that means darkness. Then we have also a dotted line, which is the critical uh, day length. So uh, when we have a um, short day plant, uh, this means that we have a plant that will only flower under a short day. So let's pay attention to uh, the period of, of light and the period of darkness. When we have a long day, uh, we will have a small period of darkness. When we have a short day, we will have a long period of darkness. So this is very important because it's very interesting how plants respond to for a period. Uh, so the plants, they're not focused on the light. They are focused on, on the darkness that they are receiving. So for example, in here, uh, we have a short day plant that has a long period of darkness. So if I take this same plant in a same day length, also a short day, uh, but I do a treatment of a flash of light in the middle of the night. So this flash of, 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 this flash of light will uh, divide the long night into two small periods of darkness. If I do that, uh, the plant will sense this as a long day because in a long day uh, I have a small period of darkness. So this is very interesting because we can we can um, easily do this inside of a greenhouse and control the flowering of our plants. So let's move now to long days. Is the same way, just opposite. <laughs> uh, for example, in a long day plants, uh, we will have a response of flowering when um, the, the night is smaller and we have a longer day. So let's uh, think about a situation where, where we have a natural short day, um, probably during winter, for example, and I want to trigger flowering on my, on, on my plants. So what can I do? Something very smart will be to apply a flash of light in the middle of the night so I can create two small periods of darkness, such as in a long day, and the plant will flower. So uh, this is uh, why uh, greenhouse technologies are very important in, uh, in uh, uh, floriculture. So how can we apply photoperiodic treatments to our plants? That is very simple. There are lamps designed for photoperiodic lighting. So what is the, different from, the difference from a photoperiodic lamp from any other kind of lamp? So, uh, well, uh, the difference is that uh, usually photoperiodic lamps will be very low energy consumption. Um, normally, uh, the, the plants can sense light from very, very low light intensity. So there is no need to have a very bright light to uh, stimulate for a periodic response. For example, in Hort Americas, uh, we have uh, this lamp uh, from GE. The name of the lamp is Arise Greenhouse Pro LED Lamp. And uh, this lamp is designed to provide optimal plant uh, management for controlling for a period. So there is research done uh, where we found out that uh, some plants can sense light even from two micromoles of light intensity. That is pretty, it's very, very low. So it's important to know that when you want to just control for the period, uh, you can go uh, to a lamp that is a low, uh, low consumption, low um, energy consumption light. But lamps with higher intensities can also be helpful in ornamentals. 
So the lamps with higher outputs uh, cannot only control the photoperiod, so you can also control easily the photoperiod with these lamps, but also can increase uh, uh, the, your production in terms of um, the time that it will take you to produce your plants. So let's explain from the beginning. Uh, first, uh, there is research done, for example, in orchids, where um, um, if you increase the light intensity uh, under development of the light, for example, from uh, 40 uh, to 160 micromoles, uh, then uh, you can have a good response, first of all, with the size of the diameter of your flowers. And uh, you can also have uh, a reduction in both abortion, which is really nice. Uh, other important fact about orchids is that they don't like direct sunlight. So if you have LED lighting, this is a very good option to provide light intensity without the heat that it usually uh, is uh, emitted by the sun. So in North America, we have uh, different options of top lighting. Uh, our best option right now is uh, the GEL 1000, which is the one from the picture. Uh, but we also have other, other top lighting options that can also show good results. And um, so the next slide is actually a research uh, done uh, with one of our customers. Uh, so let me share a little bit about uh, the results that we got from this. In Hort Americas, we really care about uh, showing you how our products can help you to improve production. So uh, this is why we constantly uh, share uh, case studies uh, about uh, the effect of the implementation of some of Hort Americas products in plant production. So on this slide, I will share an example of the use of uh, the rice element uh, LED fixtures. So uh, this is from uh, GE, and um, this is an example uh, that, uh, that, we, what, that we took from one of our customers. So this customer it was on Louisville, and um, they have in their uh, greenhouse for orchids production, um, which is 10,000 square foot. So in this greenhouse, the growers installed uh, 70 Arise Element LED fixtures. And uh, the result was that plants that normally took uh, 24 to uh, 36 months to develop, now flower at uh, 16 to uh, 20 months. So uh, this means that uh, this grower was able to reduce the time of uh, development in their plants. By making uh, your growth cycle shorter, the grower can keep the cost per plant down while having flexibility to adjust changes in preference on customers. So definitely there is an advantage of the use of, uh, of lights, of artificial lighting inside of your greenhouse. And even more important, when you reduce production time, you can fit more plants into your system in less time, meaning that you can avoid the necessity of a larger area of growth. So you can grow more plants in less space. So in case uh, you are interested in orchids, uh, it's very important to know um, that we need to provide different conditions to these kind of plants under the vege vegetative phase and the generative phase. So usually a greenhouse is uh, divided into different areas. Um, the generative area needs to have an average temperature of 83 degrees Fahrenheit with 65% uh, humidity. And uh, the generative area uh, is way cooler. Um, and uh, in, in, in this area, we need to have about um, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And in this stage is where we usually apply uh, the increase in light intensity to uh, promote flowering and accelerate the growth 
in all plants. Just speaking about the nutrient requirements, orchids, uh, they um, usually um, grow better under conditions of a pH of 5.8 to uh, 6.4. And uh, they don't like salts, so we uh, need to keep an EC very low from 1 to 1 1.5 um, microsiemens. Um, it's very important to uh, always keep the EC low because if it's uh, a little bit higher than two, uh, plants will start to, to look unhappy. And um, a very, very important aspect when growing orchids is to have a good drainage. So uh, the recommended uh, substrate for growing orchids are expanded clay, uh, perlite, and bark. All of these has uh, these properties about uh, the drainage that we need in orchids. But usually the best option is bark and is the one that is most used uh, by uh, commercial growers. So now that you're exciting about orchids, uh, let me just share an example of orchid production. So here we have a picture of green circle growers located in Ohio, where they grow 6.5 million orchids in 25 acres of greenhouse. These greenhouses obviously were built specifically for orchid production. So this is just an example of how many plants can you get from a greenhouse production. And obviously, most of the, of the products that I, I, I've been mentioning, you can find them all in our website. The substrates, the lights, and any kind of questions you have regarding uh, how to grow uh, ornamentals or how to grow orchids specifically, uh, specifically uh, please uh, reach me out. So remember that floriculture is also important. Uh, we have vegetables, but uh, flowers are also very, very important to keep us happy and uh, to keep our, our places decorated. And it's also a very, uh, a very strong market in, in horticulture. So this is our team, the Hort Americas team. Uh, remember, my name is Carla Garcia. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I hope you have a lot of questions and now interested in growing orchids. So please uh, shoot me an email if you're interested of any kind of products from us or, or if you have any kind of questions on how to grow an orchids.